Okay, well, let's talk about how you go about solving one of these questions where you need to determine the amount of excess reactant that remains. So, there's a couple of ways of going about this. But either way you take, you're going to get to the same result. You're going to figure out which one is the excess reactant. Okay, because according to this scenario, you start with 15 grams of this. In fact, let me put the little marker here, 15.0 grams of this and 15.0 grams of this. And uh, you are going to find that one of these is going to get used up completely and the other will have some left over. So the question is, which one and how much? Well, that's what you're going to do using one of two methods. So uh, your objective here is we're going to go through a couple of methods of how to do this. And then you'll have some other practice problems to try out. And then at the end of the video, I'll put up the solutions to those practice problems. All right, so let's jump into this one. And I'll call this uh, method number one. Because again, there's a couple of ways to go about this. And it really comes down to personal preference as to which one you decide to use. I don't even really have a name for it. I suppose I could call it the, uh, comp the comparative method. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out how much each reactant needs of the other reactants and see how what I have compares to what I need and uh, where, where the excess is. So here's, here's, let me show you what this looks like in action. So method number one, I'm going to take how many grams of HCl does this many grams of aluminum need? How many grams of aluminum does this many grams of HCl need? So uh, that's what I'm going to set up. So 15.0 grams of aluminum for one calculation. and then 15.0 uh, grams of HCl for the other calculation. And uh, for the result of this, I need to find how many grams of HCl is uh, needed for using, to be in order to use up all 15 grams of this aluminum. And uh, for here, I'm going to use, find out how many grams of aluminum are needed to completely react all 15 grams of this HCl. Now, in order to do that, I do need to balance the equation. So looking at this, let's see, uh, two hydrogens. So we'll start with two hydrogens. But then again, if I had two hydrogens, that means two chlorines. But there's three chlorines here. So um, long story short, it basically comes down to having two of these, six of these, two of these, and three of these. Okay, when you balance the equation. Because after all, this is not solvable if you don't balance the equation. Okay, now, let's do this with the balanced equation. So, first I'm going to calculate how many grams of HCl for this mass of aluminum. So, let's see, one mole of aluminum has a mass of 26.98 grams of aluminum. All right, grams of aluminum cancel grams of aluminum. Uh, out of here, I see two next to the aluminum, so that's two moles of aluminum and uh, six moles of HCl. Okay, so that moles of aluminum cancels moles of aluminum. Now I need to cancel this away, and I'm going to do that by using the molar mass of HCl, where one mole of HCl has a mass of uh, 36.46 grams I put grams of HCl there, that way moles of HCl cancel moles of HCl to get grams of HCl in the final answer. Before I calculate that number though, let's do the calculations down here also, where one mole of HCl, again, is 36.46 grams of HCl. And uh, this middle part, out of the balance equation, I got six moles of HCl right out of here. Let's see, I need grams of aluminum, so that means I'm going to go from moles of HCl to moles of aluminum. Two moles of aluminum. And then, uh, so this is grams of HCl cancels grams of HCl. Moles of HCl cancels moles of HCl. Moles of aluminum needs to cancel with moles of aluminum. And the mass of one mole of aluminum is 26.98 grams. Thus giving grams of aluminum for my final answer. Now I can go through and calculate these, so that divided by that times that divided by that times that comes out to 60.8 grams of HCl needed for that much aluminum. 
So 15 grams of aluminum would need 60.8 grams of HCl to react completely. Okay? Uh, this divided by that times that divided by that times that. You do the math, it comes out to 3.70 grams of aluminum needed. So, all right. Let's see what we got here. You have 15 grams of aluminum, and you only need to use 3.7 of them. So since you have 15, you're only using 3.7, you're going to have extra aluminum. Okay, aluminum is your excess reactant. Look at the hydrochloric acid by, con by contrast. It says here you started with 15 grams of it, but you, in order for this to be happy, you need 60. So you have 15, but you need 60. You don't have nearly enough. You've only got 15 out of the 60 that you would need to react all this. So that means there's not enough HCl. It's limiting. There's more than enough aluminum. You got 15, and you only need 3.7. So that's your excess reactants. So that's the one that's going to be left over, and that's what we need to calculate. How much is going to be left over? Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take uh, the amount of HCl, I sorry, the amount of aluminum I started with. So 15.0 grams of aluminum is available. That's the amount you started with according to the question. I'm going to subtract out the 3.70 grams of aluminum that was uh, used up, i.e. needed for the reaction. And uh, what that's going to leave is uh, the amount that was left unused. Okay, so 15.0 minus 3.70 is that many grams that remain. Okay, so we'll call it 11.3 grams of aluminum remain. Okay, so that's how much aluminum remains unused after the end of the reaction. That's method number one. Okay? Let's look at a different method that you could also solve this exact same question with, and it might actually be more convenient depending on what you're being asked. First of all, let's get a clear paper here. And we'll call this method number two. So method number two, instead of calculating how much each reactant needs of the other one, I'm going to calculate how much product is made by this reactant, and I'll calculate how much is made by this reactant, subtract out the results, and then back calculate to the excess reactant. That probably makes no sense the way I said it, so watch and see what I mean. All right, again, let's uh, balance this reaction as we did before. Two, six, two, and three. And okay. Let's say that the question had asked me how much product is made. Then this method number two would actually be more convenient than method number one. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to calculate how much product is made by each reactant. So 15.0 grams of aluminum grams of aluminum chloride. Let's say it asked you how much aluminum chloride is made. This actually would be a more convenient way to do it. 15.0 grams of HCl. Because after all, this is what you would probably do anyway if you're asked how many grams of aluminum chloride are made or how many grams of hydrogen are made. You could do the same thing with that product too. There you go. So I'm setting this up. Let's scoot this so that you can see it in there. All right, that's the setup for the for what I'm going to do. So watch this. I'm going to begin by uh, filling in these numbers in order to do the calculation. Let's see.
All right. So there's the two calculations that would give you the amount of product made by each um, reactant. Okay, you do this calculation, you get to 74.1 grams of this made and 18.3 grams of the same product made by the other reactant. Now, um, here's the trick that I'm going to do. I'm going to subtract these from each other and then do a third calculation of how much the difference between these would lead back to the um, excess reactant. Here, here's what I mean. I'm going to take, well, let's see, I'm going to subtract the two yields. So 74.1 minus 18.3 equals uh, 55.8 grams of ALCL3. Okay, again, I just subtracted these two numbers from each other. Okay, it's just a nice little trick. Okay, I then take this number, I'm going to do another calculation. 55.8 grams of ALCL3 And I'm going to use it to calculate grams of my excess reactant. And it'll actually tell me how many grams of excess reactant remain. Okay. Well, wait, how do I even know what the excess reactant is? Go back here. If the limiting reactant made a less amount of product, the excess reactant made more products. We look back here. Ah, the excess reactant is aluminum because it made more product. So I'm going to use this to calculate how many grams of aluminum. So I subtracted these two numbers. I'm now going to solve for the excess reactant. That's aluminum. All right. Well, let's hop to it. So one mole of ALCL3 has a molar mass of 133.33 grams of ALCL3. See, looking at the equation, the balanced equation up here for the next part, um, there is two moles of ALCL3, and uh, there's also a two next to the aluminum in the equation, so two moles of aluminum. It's a two to two ratio and one mole of aluminum has a mass of 26.98 grams of aluminum. So this will allow me to convert, take the difference between these two yields here and use it to calculate how many uh, grams of aluminum would be necessary to make that difference. Okay, so I do that. And, uh, well, the number comes out to, the, well, this divided by that times that divided by that times that. The final number is 11.3 grams of aluminum. Okay, that's the result of uh, using method number two. Now, here's the thing, method number one and method number two, how do they compare? Let's have a look. First of all, I should... Uh, clearly label this, 11.3 grams of aluminum remain. Okay, so method number two, method number one. Now let's see if I can get this into view. Can you see how both methods yield the same result? So whether you prefer method number one, where you see how much each reactant needs of the other, compare what you need to what you have, subtract them and find how much is uh, remaining or if you prefer method number two where you see how much product it makes subtract the two and then find out uh, how much of the excess reactant is made by the number you get by subtracting the two either way you're going to get to the same answer okay
Now, try one method, try both method. Either one's fine. Here again is the same problem you just saw worked out plus two others. And what I'd like you to do right now is solve this, these two questions. What I'll do in just a moment is put up the answers using both methods. I'll show method one's solution first, and then I'll show method two's solution next. Okay, so pause now and work out these two questions. All right, method one. There's the answer to one of them. Okay, here's the answer to the other question. Okay, all of that should be visible. All right. Method two. Okay, here's method two for the first one. Where, okay, what's happened here? I picked this one. I solved for the amount of this one that's made by each reactant. So I got 15 grams of this. That's how much of, the pr of this product it makes. 15 grams of the other reactant. This is how much of that same product it makes. Subtract these two numbers. That's what happened down here. Uh, after you subtract those two numbers and get this, you then um, take that number, that 16.2, and you and you calculate how much CO2 it would take to make that 16.2 grams of this product right here. Uh, let's see, computer, let's get you back and set. All right, there we go. Okay, so subtract the two, get this much and then calculate how much CO2 from that because I figured out earlier that CO2 is the excess reactant because it made more. And that's how I got 6.73. The same answer is from method one, by the way. 6.73 grams of CO2 remaining. And, uh, all right, method two for the other one. For the other question, the solution me using method number two looks like this. Okay, where I picked this product, uh, in this case lead 2 chloride, and figured out how much lead 2 chloride made by each reactant. And then I took these two numbers, subtracted them out. That's the difference between them. And then I capped things off by taking this subtracted number and figuring out how much of the excess reactant it would take to make this number right here using this equation, or rather this set of calculations. Again, same answers you would have got with method one, so use whichever one you're more comfortable with. All right. Well, that should take care of things for now. Happy studies.